Investing in altcoins can make you a lot of money, but only if you know when to buy and when to sell. Given that crypto is currently in a bear market, the question you should be asking now is obviously when to buy. When is the right time to accumulate those next 100x coins and tokens before the bull run begins? Today, we're going to take you through a few metrics which suggest that the time for accumulation could be imminent and give you a sense of just how big the gains could be during the next bull market. My name is Guy, and you are watching The Coin Bureau. I'll start by saying that I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is financial advice, in case the t-shirt didn't give it away already. It's purely educational content that's meant to help you on your crypto quest. That said, knowing when to accumulate altcoins ultimately comes down to where we are in the crypto market cycle. As most of you will know, crypto follows a four-year cycle that's believed to be driven by the Bitcoin halving, which happens every four years. If you know this, prove it by smashing that like button. Now, the last Bitcoin halving happened in May 2020, and in the year and a half that followed, BTC went up by around 7x, ETH went up by more than 20x, and hundreds of altcoins like ADA went up by 100x or more. In case you didn't know, the next Bitcoin halving will happen in April next year. Before you run off and start filling up your altcoin bags, though, there are four things you need to keep in mind. The first is that not every crypto cycle is so clear-cut. Some cycles have been slightly longer, and others have been slightly shorter. As you may have heard, the current crypto bear market has been abnormally long. Now, the reason for this is different depending on who you ask, but in our opinion, it's primarily because of crypto's correlation to macro factors. In other words, it's because bigger investors are more involved in crypto, and this is making its price action mirror that of other large asset classes, namely tech stocks. If this is indeed the case, then the crypto bear market could continue if tech stocks see another leg lower. This is certainly possible given the other macro factors in play, such as interest rates and geopolitical tensions. The caveat is that crypto hasn't been nearly as correlated to tech stocks in recent months. Logically, this means that crypto's price action has been driven primarily by crypto-specific factors during this period. The fact that BTC barely moved on a higher-than-expected CPI print, but pumped by 10% on the rumors of a spot Bitcoin ETF listing, is clear evidence of this. The problem is, that there are lots of bearish crypto factors that could likewise keep prices suppressed for the foreseeable future. Most of these have to do with regulations, which have made bigger investors uncomfortable investing in crypto. This would explain the recent lack of crypto and macro correlation. If you've watched any of our videos about crypto regulations, you'll know that most of crypto's regulatory issues won't be solved anytime soon. While it's possible that we could still see a bullish catalyst like a spot Bitcoin ETF listing, this is unlikely to happen until the regulatory issues are resolved. Even then, it's possible that the spot Bitcoin ETF listing could be a sell the news event given the current lack of interest in crypto. As the recently approved Ethereum Futures ETF has shown, an ETF listing doesn't guarantee investor inflows. It just sets the stage for a massive bull market, which will eventually come. And folks, here is a pro tip. Make sure you have accounts on multiple crypto exchanges to ensure that you can always cash in or cash out. The Coin Bureau deals page has bonuses of up to $40,000 and trading fee discounts of up to 60% on the best cryptocurrency exchanges. The link will be in the description. Now, this ties into the second thing you need to keep in mind before you accumulate altcoins, and that's Bitcoin and its relationship to alts. Although crypto as an asset class is considered to be risky, within crypto, BTC is seen as the safe haven asset. It's where the money moves when the market is crashing. There are also bullish reasons for money moving into BTC, though. As you might have guessed, one of these is the Bitcoin halving, which I'll remind you is coming sometime in April next year. 
Between now and then, investor interest in BTC will likely continue to increase. And some would say that is guaranteed given that the final deadline for the SEC to decide about BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF application will be just before the Bitcoin halving. Naturally, what this means is that investor interest in altcoins will likely continue to decrease between now and the Bitcoin halving. In practical terms, this means that altcoin prices could continue to fall, and some could still fall by 50% or more if we see another leg lower in the crypto market. Once the Bitcoin halving has happened, though, history suggests that BTC will start to pump. Eventually, this money will flow into altcoins as investors become more comfortable taking bigger risks in an already risky asset class. What's interesting is that this rotation into altcoins seems to require a catalyst. Now, if you were around in crypto in 2020, you might recall that the catalyst that caused money to flow out of BTC and into altcoins was decentralized finance, or DeFi. The DeFi niche took off after its protocols started issuing tokens that were seeing mind-melting gains and impossible interest rates for staking. In retrospect, DeFi summer was the first domino in the altcoin bull market, and it resulted eventually in astronomical gains for so-called Ethereum killers like Solana. Ironically enough, the DeFi tokens themselves lagged after the original DeFi hype was over and never recovered to their previous highs. Assuming history repeats, then the next altcoin bull market will begin with a crypto niche blowing up in a good way. Now, if you watched our video about the crypto niches to watch for the next bull run, you'll know we're bullish on so-called Solana killers, DeFi protocols, and decentralized social media, among others. I'll explain why in just a second. Now, there are many ways to assess where we are in the Bitcoin altcoin cycle. The easiest way is to look at Bitcoin dominance, the measure of how much of crypto's total market cap is just BTC. As you can see, Bitcoin dominance has been rising since last September and could rise as high as 56%. Now, another way to assess where we are in the Bitcoin altcoin cycle is to look at the ETH BTC pair, ETH's value measured in BTC. You could say that ETH is the safe haven among altcoins and therefore serves as a simple proxy for how altcoins are doing. As you can see, it's not looking too good. If our measurements are correct, ETH could lose as much as 30% of its value against BTC in the coming months. The fact that our friend Benjamin Cowan sees the same thing suggests that our measurements aren't too far off. This could foreshadow a major shakeout among altcoins, at least in BTC terms. Now, this relates to the third thing you need to keep in mind before you accumulate altcoins, and that's that they're not all going to pump or dump at the same time. After the spotlight turns away from BTC, it will probably shine on ETH given that it's the second largest crypto. After that, it's anyone's guess. Now, as I mentioned earlier, chances are that the first altcoins to pump will come from a specific crypto niche, like for instance GameFi or NFTs. Make no mistake, when the altcoins in this niche do pump, you will feel the FOMO. The initial inflows will be enormous relative to market cap, resulting in unprecedented gains for some folks. This is when you'll need to remember what happened to the DeFi niche. The pump may be short-lived. Instead of FOMOing into the latest VC narrative and getting wrecked, ask yourself this. What are the most speculative crypto niches of all, and which ones have the best fundamentals? The reason you want to ask both questions is because of the underlying macro factors that will be guiding the decisions of the biggest investors. Newsflash, but the biggest investors are the ones that will pump altcoins by 100x or more, not regular retail apes like you and me. From our perspective, the main macro factor that the biggest investors will be watching is interest rates. If interest rates are low, then the big investors will probably bet their money on the most speculative cryptos. If interest rates are high, they'll probably bet on the ones with the best fundamentals. Now, once upon a time, the most speculative cryptos were those that claimed to be the next Bitcoin. 
during the last cycle, the most speculative cryptos were those that claimed to be the next Ethereum. It's no coincidence that Ethereum killers like Avalanche saw some of the largest returns in percentage terms. So this begs the question of what the most speculative cryptos will be during the next cycle. We can't say for sure, but we suspect the answer will be those so-called Solana killers, such as, for instance, Aptos. Now, I must stress that this is just our opinion and we might not be correct. So it's on you to figure out which crypto niche you think is the most speculative. Now, when it comes to the cryptos with the best fundamentals, fees and tokenomics are the name of the game. According to the Crypto Fees website, the cryptos which have generated the most fees over the last week are Ethereum and Bitcoin, followed by a bunch of DeFi protocols and select layer ones. This is where tokenomics come in. One of the advantages that Ethereum has over Bitcoin is that a portion of all ETH used to pay for fees is burned. As we've seen, this can make ETH deflationary at times, which has the practical effect of increasing its price. Less supply plus same or more demand equals prices rise. The catch is that Ethereum has a very large market cap, meaning that the fees and deflationary tokenomics aren't that significant relative to ETH's size. This doesn't mean that ETH won't pump. It just means that it will pump much less compared to a similar crypto with a much smaller market cap. DeFi protocols are a perfect example, and that's why we're bullish on them. DeFi protocols generate much more in fees relative to their market cap. The only thing missing is the tokenomics, a way of translating those fees into gains. So far, only a few protocols, such as MakerDAO, have done this. Lo and behold, it's worked damn well for MKR's price, despite the crypto bear market. Imagine what that chart would look like during a bull market for more profitable DeFi protocols like Aave and Uniswap. Note that regulatory clarity is required for this to happen, hence the earlier comments about regulations. This pertains to the fourth thing you need to keep in mind before accumulating altcoins, and that's how the next wave of crypto investors will approach the market. It's safe to assume that the next wave of big investors will stick to the largest cryptos because of their liquidity and market depth. Now, in theory, this means that the largest cryptos will pump the most. But if you think this, then you've already forgotten what I just said. In practice, it's the market cap that matters. The larger the market cap, the harder it is to push prices up or down. That means smaller gains and losses in percentage terms. This is something that the next wave of small investors probably won't understand. The previous cycle suggests they'll be aggressively accumulating cryptos with a low price tag regardless of the market cap because they think they'll be billionaires if the price tag becomes as large as BTCs or ETHs. Now, not sure who needs to hear it, but Shiba Inu will never reach $1 because then it would have a market cap of $590 trillion, which is literally larger than any financial thing in existence, except maybe derivatives debt, which could be in the quadrillions. In any case, the result of this retail investor reality is that the market cap of some cryptos could rise to unreasonable levels, just like Shiba Inu and the other meme coins did in the last cycle. As such, you must take both the market cap and the sticker price of an altcoin into account before you accumulate. The only thing more important than market cap and sticker price is marketing, and the most important part of marketing is the narrative. There's no shortage of narratives in crypto, and they often coincide with the different crypto niches. It's too soon to say which narratives will be the dominant ones. Believe it or not, but we believe that one of the biggest crypto narratives during the next bull run could be privacy. That's simply because big investors like central banks and wealthy individuals don't want their balances to be publicly viewable to the plebs. This will require some kind of privacy solution. Of course, privacy coins are a niche of their own, but privacy can theoretically be applied to almost any crypto project, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
Consider a scenario where Solana killers are the killer niche and one of them introduces privacy features. That would be a moonshot in this context. I should note, though, that narratives don't need to be this elaborate, and it's more likely than not that they won't be. Look no further than the metaverse narrative for evidence of that. When Facebook announced that it was rebranding to Meta, every crypto that did anything related to the metaverse saw ridiculous gains. More recently, AI-related cryptos rallied due to the hype around ChatGPT. If you look at the ones that pumped the most, you'll notice that they had a low sticker price, a small market cap, and fit the narrative. They were also available on the best exchanges. So, remember our deals page with all those bonuses in the description. In sum then, don't ask yourself which altcoins you want to accumulate. Ask yourself which altcoins new investors will want to accumulate when the crypto bull market begins. Again, it's too soon to say for sure, but with a bit of research, you should come up with a list of viable cryptos to consider. Right then, you're probably wondering by now just how big the gains could be during the next crypto bull market. Well, the answer ultimately depends on which crypto we're talking about. By now, you'll know that the money will flow from BTC to ETH to the large caps and to others. So let's take it from the top. Obviously, there are many ways of measuring historical gains. The way we like to do it is to look at the previous zone of support and resistance for the entire cycle and compare it to the most recent top. In BTC's case, this zone was around 1K during the first cycle. BTC's top in 2017 was around 20K, so 20X. In the second cycle, BTC's key zone was around 10K. BTC's top in 2021 was 70k, so 7x. This suggests that BTC has diminishing returns over time, which makes sense considering that this is what happens to every asset as it matures. If we accept this premise, then BTC should see around a 3x gain between its current key zone and its next top. As far as we can tell, BTC's key zone is around 40k for this cycle. This actually makes sense considering that 40k is roughly what it will cost to mine BTC after the next halving. So, some quick maths tells you that this translates to a BTC price of roughly 120k, which is in line with many other predictions, granted that there's no shortage of those. Anyway, next up we have ETH, which is also seeing diminishing returns and seems to be following BTC just one cycle behind. ETH's zone of support during the previous cycle was around $250, and its top in 2021 was around 5 k That's a 20x gain, and it foreshadows a 7x gain compared to its current zone. Similarly to BTC, ETH's zone for this cycle is around 25 k roughly 10x the zone of the previous cycle. Funnily enough, a 7x gain would translate to a 15 k ETH top, which is also what many are predicting. What's fascinating is that the other large caps seem to be one cycle behind ETH, namely the so-called Ethereum killers. I'll use Cardano's ADA as an example here. ADA saw a 100x gain between its zone in the previous cycle and its top in the most recent cycle, from $0.03 cents to $3. ADA's zone for the current cycle seems to be around $1.20. So, if Cardano is following Ethereum, this means ADA could see a 20x gain between this key zone and its next top of around $24. That doesn't sound like much, but consider that ADA is currently worth $0.25. Cents. That's almost 100x. Now, I know all this sounds amazing, but I must underscore the fact that these are just a few of many predictions out there. The fact of the matter is, that nobody knows how high these cryptos could go, and it depends on factors that are fundamentally outside of our control, be they crypto or macro. The only certainty is that crypto is extremely speculative, even when you sprinkle in some fundamentals. This, of course, makes crypto very volatile, which makes some people millionaires and other people poor. You obviously want to become the former, but you also want to make sure 
that you don't become the latter in the process. So never invest more than you can afford to lose. And always remember to store your crypto on your own personal wallet so it doesn't get lost when the next centralized entity goes down. As it so happens, the Coin Bureau deals page has the biggest discounts on the best hardware wallets too. Link, I'll remind you, is in the description. OK, folks, that is all for today's video. If you found it helpful, help us out by smashing that like button. If you want to keep getting this helpful content, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help others, share this video with them. And now I'm going to go and help myself and get a bit of rest. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.